My dear friends in Christ, St. Paul begins today's epistle by saying, now is the acceptable time. And I think Holy Mother Church places this epistle at the beginning of Lent to remind us that it is indeed a blessed season. It is a season in the liturgical year where there is an opportunity of extra graces. And the reason for that is not only that we are doing penance, we are fasting, we have given up something for Lent, we are mortifying ourselves, but also because we are doing this penance in union with Catholics all over the world. It is like a great army of the mystical body of Christ, everyone crying out to God, have mercy on us, forgive us, and offering penance. So again, there's an added value because we are doing it together as fellow members of the mystical body of Christ. Lent is a very valuable season, but it is also a time when there can be and should be great spiritual growth. Now, what is an obstacle to our spiritual growth? A number of things, but in particular, we have to be wary of temptation. Why did our Lord allow himself to be tempted by the devil at the conclusion of his 40-day fast in the desert? Certainly, our Lord could not have sinned. That would have been impossible. But he permitted the devil to tempt him to give us courage in our temptations because temptation is part of life. In fact, Holy Job, in the book of Job, in the Old Testament says, the life of man on earth is a warfare. We are continually tempted and we cannot escape from it. There were great holy men and women, hermits, who would go off apart from the world and live in a cave or some retired place to escape the world, the temptations of the world. But even then, they would carry themselves with them. And we have within us one of the primary sources of temptation, and that is our fallen human nature. So we know our, our temptations come from the world, the flesh, and the devil. And we can flee the world, and we should as much as we can avoid the spirit of the world, but there will always be the devil and there will always be our fallen human nature. So we must fortify ourselves against temptation. We must build up through the devout reception of the sacraments, through our regular prayer life, through our mortifications and sacrifices to build up our resistance to temptation. Now, one of the important things to keep in mind about temptation is that a temptation is not a sin. A temptation is not a sin. And it doesn't matter how long we are tempted and how strong the temptation is, that doesn't mean we committed a sin. We may have committed perhaps a venial sin of not making a more vigorous effort to get rid of the temptation. But sometimes temptations come and Despite our best efforts, they continue to come. A couple of weeks ago, we had that epistle of St. Paul where he said he was, there was a thorn in his flesh, an angel of Satan to buffet him. An angel of Satan meaning one of the demons. And he said, three times, I besought our Lord that it would be taken away from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Which is another way of saying, our Lord saying to St. Paul, no, I'm not going to take away the temptation. I'm going to allow you to be tempted because it is in temptation that we prove our love for God. If we had no struggles, no temptation, where would be the opportunity of merit? So temptation is dangerous. We must be very much on our guard. But temptation is also an opportunity to prove ourselves. A soldier who goes into battle 
who is in the thick of the fight, has that opportunity to prove his valor, to prove his worth as a soldier, and may even receive some wounds, and perhaps is proud of those wounds received in the fight for his sovereign. So we likewise are in a warfare, and we cannot avoid temptations, but we must Be very much on our guard against them and fight, as St. Paul says, fight the good fight. So how then do we conquer temptation? Well, first and foremost, we must avoid unnecessary temptation. And that would be by willfully going into the occasion of sin, exposing ourselves to danger. That would be foolhardy. That would be really an act of pride. As though we're saying, well, I can put myself in danger and I will conquer the temptation. And God allows such a one to succumb because of his pride and foolishness, foolhardiness, going into an unnecessary temptation. So first and foremost, we have to avoid occasions of sin insofar as we can. But second, we must have humility we must realize that it is only by the grace of God that we can overcome temptation. And we must ask for that grace. Not only in your regular daily prayer life where you pray your rosary, you pray your morning and night prayers every day, but also make use of ejaculatory prayer. And that would be those short prayers, such as the holy names, such as those brief invocations, such as the invocations of Our Lady in the litany of Loretto, Mother Most Pure, pray for me. Mother Most Chaste, Mother Inviolate, to invoke our Blessed Mother and our Divine Lord. So pray at the time of temptation. And again, flee the temptation as best we can. I'd like to come back to what I just said a bit earlier about the importance of humility. Those who succumb to temptation are those who rely on their own strength as though we are strong enough of ourselves to conquer temptation. You know the old saying, pride goes before the fall. It is when one is too reliant on his own strength that he is likely to fall into sin. And oftentimes, God permits individuals who are guilty of pride to be tempted more than others as a punishment, to humble themselves, to bring them down to a realization of our tremendous weakness and our complete and total need of God's help. So, number one, avoid temptations. Number two, strengthen yourself for the battle through the devout and frequent reception of the sacraments, through your prayer life, your sacrifices, your penances, etc. And remember to turn immediately to our Divine Lord, to our Blessed Mother, when you are tempted. And to pray with humility and pray with confidence and trust in God's help. There's a story of one saint, I don't remember who, who was tempted tremendously. And the saint finally, fighting the temptation, cried out, Lord, where are you? And then heard the voice of our Lord saying, I'm right here. I've been with you all this time. And as our Lord said to St. Paul, I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able to endure. So the temptations we experience are an opportunity for merit. Do we think that we will be able to obtain the happiness of heaven without earning it? And how do we earn everlasting happiness? By fighting the good fight, by conquering temptation. And if we fall, let us humble ourselves with deep and heartfelt contrition, let us ask God's forgiveness and then pick ourselves up and rededicate ourselves to the fight, to the battle, to serving our divine Lord faithfully. Temptations are different for everyone. One may be strongly tempted, another not so strongly tempted. One may be tempted more in one's youth and not as much later, and yet one may be tempted throughout his life. We are all tempted and we are never free from temptation. And this is something to keep in mind. Sometimes 
Things in the spiritual life can be going along well, and we can be lulled into a state of complacency. And then all of a sudden, hardly without realizing it, we are bombarded with temptation, which reminds us to not become complacent because we are human, we are weak, we are liable to fall if we're not on our guard. So our Lord in today's Gospel, permitting himself to be tempted by the devil, he did so to give us courage, to help us realize that a temptation is not a sin. A temptation is an opportunity for merit. A temptation is dangerous, and we must not foolishly put ourselves into the occasion of sin unnecessarily. But a temptation of itself is not a sin. Let us fight the good fight. Let us be resolved to make a good Lent. Start off the season of Lent well, with vigor, with fervor, with determination, and you will likely make a good Lent. Let us not allow it to happen. That we come to Easter in six weeks and have to look back and regret, I didn't make a very good Lent. Let that not happen to you. But let us be determined to spend this season well and to obtain those graces which are available, unique graces, because now is the time. Now is a wonderful season, an opportunity for special graces. Let us especially resolve to continue to fight the good fight and to conquer temptation with God's help. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.